Hey everybody, good morning. Uh, it is a gray and gloomy day here in Dresden. Um, Dresden, some of you may have heard of, may not have. I think a lot of Generation X folks have heard of it just because of a book we read when we were in high school. I know uh, it was one of, one of my favorite authors, Slaughterhouse-Five uh, by Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, talks about Dresden a little bit. Dresden, I, I believe the character, the main character was a fighter pilot in the Allies uh, firebombing uh, February 14th and 15th of 1945 in World War II. Yeah, you know, I've got this I've got this gray day behind me and I gotta say, visiting Dresden, I think gray, kind of uh, wet weather is, is appropriate. Um, so, I, you know, I'm guessing it stuck with me in the book, the whole thing about the firebombing, because I never heard of what a firebombing was before. But seeing this city, I now get it. I, I'm standing in front of the Presidential Palace, which is now a museum, but I want you to try and get a look as I pan a little bit here at some of these buildings. Uh, we've got uh, some town halls, churches, uh, you can see the Presidential Palace, and you'll notice um, the stone, most of it has got some like black on it, it almost, it looks like a soot, I mean all the way up, I mean you can really see it there. The reason is, Dresden, like, like so many of the German cities, was destroyed uh, in World War II, but unlike the other German cities where, you know, they seem to like sweep away the rubble and, and build anew, whereas you know, with the exception of the the landmarks in Berlin, um, you know, or the like the monuments in Warsaw, Poland, the cities just look new and spectacular. This one, they've just, it's like these buildings were bombed to shells, and then they just rebuilt around the shells, but sort of left all of this black rock, black stone. Uh, so you, the history of, of what happened here, and it was horrific. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying I have a problem with the city deciding, you know what, we want people to remember what happened here. 30,000 people died over a 48-hour period. Two nights of Allied bombing of this city, 30,000 lives. Most of them, I'm sure, were not soldiers, okay? But I mean, but I mean, they, they've got like a um, reminder every day when they look around and see all these buildings with, with black. Now, obviously, you've got a lot of new buildings and, and things like that, but uh, in fact, the, uh, their big church, the uh, Frankirk, I believe it's called, um, it was just recently redone. Uh, I think President Obama recently visited it, but uh, it, that's not uncommon here. In fact, the, the presidential, uh, the, the palace behind me, uh, it still isn't done. It's not finished until 2013. So, you know, a lot of this that was destroyed was just sort of left in ruins. They started to uh, sweep away what they could, build new stuff, but otherwise left the ruins, and now they've really started to rebuild it, which is great. But they have left, left again, the the uh, scorched stone so that you never forget what happened here. And so uh, it's a different feeling than you might feel in the other German cities. Uh, we had about three minutes. And I think I'm running around four on some of these, but I want to get some questions in. Um, one of the questions that, that uh, was interesting, uh, somebody asked me, you know, how am I getting around the cities as far as public transportation goes? What, what am I doing? Um, honestly, with the exception of London and Berlin, uh, you can walk just about everywhere. For the most part, the train station is right in the center of what will be the old city. Most of these cities I've visited so far have an old city. Okay, so, so you find out where that is, uh, and, and most of the tourist attractions are all kind of centered around that. So within a few hours, so two, three hours worth of walking, I can see just about everything. So for the most part, I walk. Um, now and again, I'll have a hostel that's just outside the old city, so I might take the above ground train. That's not like the trains I'm using for the Eurorail, but just sort of like a subway overground. Uh, but for the most part, I'm just being able to walk, and uh, everything's pretty compact and convenient. So. Uh, so anyway, Dresden, I think, would be a city, if you were planning to spend a good amount of time in Germany, this would be a city worth checking out, or certainly for World War II buffs, just to come and actually feel kind of the history of what happened here. I don't think it has a ton to do. It has a nice opera house. Uh, it has a big, uh, their treasure trove, they call it. It's, it's, I forget the name in German, but some great treasures, like a, gr a giant green diamond that's really fascinating. Otherwise, you know, if you're having a shorter trip, you're hopping between cities, I think Dresden's one's probably you could leave it off the list. So anyway, this is my last day in Germany. I'm heading to Czech, Czech Republic tomorrow. It's been an absolute blast here. This is a great country, totally worth seeing. Thank you to everybody that made it so wonderful, and I will talk to you from Prague tomorrow.